Right, welcome to the US session, uh, where we'll just be previewing uh, the US session um, that is upcoming in the next uh, next 30 minutes. Now, I'm just going to just double check um, all the relevant social media channels just to make sure that we are actually live on everywhere we need to be. Now, why is that? Okay, there shouldn't be tea and hot sauce. I'm not sure why it's called the same thing as the last one, but uh, and I don't think if I can rename it, which I don't think matters. You're in as well, you Jeff. Yeah, but how you doing? I'm all right. You can't rename this, no. Just, just uh, we're down as tea uh, and hot sauce. I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, let, let me fiddle with. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. You, you can be. I don't know. What would you prefer to be? The hot, I suppose you're hot sauce, really, aren't you? Uh, once upon a time, I might have been. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a bit past these days, to be frank. <laughs> what's what's um what's past the hot um hot sauce? What what, what does it get like? Um, yeah. Some sort. <laughs> no, they've got a medicine for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably a, a tea that's uh, that had the tea bag left in a bit too much. So uh, stewed, we will be stewed and uh, and congealed sauce instead. I think. I actually just went and got a cup of hot tea. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can be stewed tea then, and I'll be uh, I'll be the you congealed can be hot sauce. sauce. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> So we had a pound trade in earlier, mate, which um, actually did pretty well, uh, but by all accounts, it's, uh, it moved quite nicely to the upside, didn't it? I, uh, I've got my pivots here, so let's just bring these in pivots as well. Yeah, it did. At that point, yeah, so it's, uh, it, it had a pretty pretty decent run of it, didn't it? Um, one sec. Sadly, I was um, chatting before <laughs> when 2P1 was supposed to be taken, and uh, I... At that point, and I always do, it's my rule, move my stops to entry um, so I don't get a uh, big kick in the ass with a loser. And, of course, um, it hit my stop loss, which was that entry. So no uh, no, no big deal, but yep. where have I lost it? Here's it gone. What's it doing now? I haven't looked at it for a bit. What's that, the pound? Oh, it's coming back a bit. Yeah, it's coming back a little bit. Yeah, and it's a different trade now, isn't it? That's the thing. And uh, you know, it, it's uh, it has been in its history and run. And we'll, we'll have a, just a quick uh, quick shoot around at the uh, the dollar as well. Um, but the guy should have taken two lots of profit on that. Ah, so I mean, that, that, that's that's partly why we're here, isn't it? So obviously, we, we want to uh, we want to try and maximise our own profit. But it is one of the reasons that we're here is is to try and make sure that the guys in the room make money as well. So. Yeah, it's if, probably uh, um, probably <laughs> important for the guys to understand that sometimes uh, it is not as easy as it seems to chat yep. and explain things oh. and trade on on small time frames. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't easy, guys. No, it's, it really isn't, and uh, actually, uh, it's hard. It's what is it's a it's a very very difficult uh, difficult thing to do. I was going to say difficult skill, but it doesn't really come into play because you, you do you just miss trades. It's mm. just that that's just the way it is. You just end up missing trades because you can't think 100% clearly. And particularly when you are trading on short term time frames, you, you really need that clarity of thought uh, to try and get into the market. So, uh, so completely understandable uh, has to be said, mate. And um, yeah, look, and frankly, you know, there are, are quite a few occasions when, and I'm sure you're the same, where we won't take a trade because we know that we can't manage it properly. Absolutely. But, and that's when we're in front of you guys, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm the same at any time. If if I can't manage to trade in a thirty minute time frame, am I going to bed or whatever the case may be? I've got to go out and deliver it, or go and cut a bamboo pole down or something. Uh, then I won't take the trade. Yeah. And they're, they're beauties, fair. those trades. They generally go 100 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so listen to those ones and ignore the others. Um, so this is the uh, this is the DXY, just just to kind of bring it in, into play, because I'm really interested in, in uh, along in the dollar. But uh, but timing is going to be um, key and, and, it's, and it's going to be everything. So um, 
we do need to see some some kind of or, or I suspect we will see a reversal pattern just the way that this is now looking you know it, sometimes they happen and sometimes they don't but the more this goes on it really is starting to look like this is going to be our left shoulder down here with a head down here and it's you know it's possible that the uh, that the chart is slightly different I think we've had one dip and I think we need two um to uh, to to uh, get some kind of um um some kind of equal measure between the the left shoulder and right shoulder and you can see that this is described as complex because it doesn't come down and then go up and then come down and make a head and then go up what, what's happened here is that we've had a move down a move up and a move down and a move up and now this w bottom here has created a left shoulder uh, you know this is the way i'm reading it currently anyway and then we go down, we go up and we go down again and we get another little W bottom pattern down here. And that looks to me like it's created the head down here. So we want something similar here. And that would mean that would be the first part of the W. Now we need to push down and a push up. Now the next push up from this point is probably the trigger. You know, so we are actually looking, this is, this is quite good in, in many respects. If we are going to get our, um, uh, uh, balance between the left shoulder and the right shoulder, then the balance would suggest that uh, the next push up would be the one to take on. So we kind of want a bar that comes down today. This, this is actually really healthy for anybody that is looking for longs in the dollar. And I am, you know, I am looking for longs in the dollar. And there's obviously many ways to trade longs in the dollar. And, and we, we can consider a few uh, right now. So if I am looking for a long in the dollar, <coughs> the first question in actual fact, I'm going to put this out into the room. Um, actually, the room's quite light today, Jeff. Yeah, I can't explain that. All the... Okay, well, do you know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about this here then, because um, there's uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, there doesn't seem to be too many too many numbers, and it'd be a bit of a waste of education. So what I might do is just wait and see uh, when we start the US show. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll come back to this and, and we'll look at it and we'll, we'll, we'll ask the question because what, what I want to know, and if anybody is in the room and they want to, they want to take part in this now, then we'll, we will do it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are a few in. Um, okay. So the, here's the question uh, to, uh, to the guys in the room. What is going to be affected if the dollar goes higher? Give me some, give me some uh, instruments um, that uh would be affected if the dollar goes higher and not only do i want to know those instruments but i want to know what direction would would we perceive that they go in jonathan you're right you're right nicely done mate that would be the first thing yes crystal same same answer as jonathan that's the first one okay so give me five give me five that, that might well be affected and this will put us in pretty good space because it means that we will be on on high alert for uh, for this potentially to uh, if it does turn around, we know what direction and we know a basket of products that we can we can attempt to trade, and then we can go down and start going. Okay, well here's five. Yes, Crystal, and I hadn't considered that one, but well done. Yes, uh, Jonathan. Yes, and yes. So we're looking good so far. Yes, um, Sino. So so far we've got gold, we've got Bitcoin, we have got uh, the euro uh, from Jonathan who is in the uh, the US um, show's uh, room at the minute. Uh, so we've got the euro and we've got the S&P. So I want one more. One more. Gold, oil, Bitcoin. Actually, that is five, isn't it? Euro and S&P. Okay, that's, that's, that's enough. If uh, You know, it doesn't matter <coughs> what we do. But where can that lead us? Let's think about what where that leads us. So we have got so far, if the dollar strengthens and what, what we're looking for with the dollar, is um, the DXY is a reversal sign and signal somewhere in this area. We don't know what it's going to be, and it's not today. It could be tomorrow. It could be uh, as late as Wednesday or potentially better off on Thursday. If this is going to give us a signal on Thursday, we're in good shape because that will potentially be after the, S the, um, the Fed. And we don't really want to have to trade before the Fed, but we will have to do it if the signs and signals mean the timing is now. <laughs> so we will see what happens. But we have got the euro we've got the s&p we've got bitcoin we have got uh we had gold and we had oil now what what we then do is um firstly we can we can go and split this into partnerships okay if it's going to affect the euro why shouldn't it affect the swissy you know why shouldn't it affect the cad if it's going to affect oil, 
you know, so we can start saying that there's a, there's a correlation. If the dollar strengthens and it affects oil negatively, it should affect the CAD negatively. If the euro is a, <clears throat> is to get um, negative um, price action, why shouldn't the Swissy get price a negative price action? OK, so we're starting to get a basket now and starting to build up the S&P. If the S&P drops, why shouldn't the Nasdaq drop? Why shouldn't the Dow drop? Now, from there, we could even go into certain shares. You know, we could say, um, why then wouldn't Tesla drop? Why wouldn't uh, NVIDIA drop? Um, and, and the list goes on and on and on. And also, if, uh, if the dollar strengthens, interestingly, there are certain stocks that might actually outperform, like Costco. You know, so, um, so we, we, can, we can go right down the supply chain just by saying what is happening here to the US dollar. Now, the US dollar really can be the king in as much that we can start a lot of analysis from looking at the US dollar. If Bitcoin was to weaken, why wouldn't Ethereum weaken? Why wouldn't uh, XRP weaken? Um, so uh, why wouldn't ADA weaken? You know, we, so we, we can start getting a basket of, um, of uh, the cryptocurrencies. Gold, I'm pretty sure that Julian um, mentioned uh, palladium. We, we know about silver. And again, that's going to take us into certain stocks. Fresnillo would be a, a stock that could get affected. Polymetal. Maybe we'd look at um, Barrick Gold as well, you know, because Barrick Gold is one of the ones that uh, Warren Buffett has just traded. Barrick Gold, you know. Um, and again, oil, we might start looking at BP. We might look at Shell. We might look at some offshore um, wind farms. You know, there's, there's lots of different things that this may lead us to just by looking at the US dollar. Now, um, that means that if we see the US, now what we could do at this particular stage <clears throat> is start looking at the best. You know, we could say, OK, look, now, now from this one chart, I have now got a basket of, of, um, of uh, potential opportunities. Now, there are over 4000 products that we can trade on a daily basis out there in the world. And it is not really our job to stick our head in uh, in one area. Um, if we are investors forward slash traders at the same time, you know, if, we, if we're trading, then we can we can just um, just look at uh, the currencies. But if we are looking at maybe uh, broadening our horizons a little bit, then what we can start doing then is saying, right, well, OK, well, if I can broaden my horizons, where can I lead to what what can what can one thing lead me to? And if I am looking at um, if I'm looking at the dollar then I can start looking at a, a basket of other things. Now, if the euro is to weaken, that means the CAC are on, the CAC 40, the French uh, market, the DAX, um, the Eurostox 50, may well strengthen. So while we're looking at, uh, you know, if, if some, some people prefer just to go bullish uh, rather than bearish. Now, if the pound is to weaken, the FTSE is to, to likely to strengthen. And again, if you go into the Cacaron, you know, maybe, maybe you like the Cacaron. So you might look at something like uh, um, Essilor um, Luxocter. I can never, never pronounce it. But they, 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 uh, they make glasses they, and they're really good, actually. They're, they're one of the, uh, the um, most solid balance sheets that I've, uh, I've, I've seen in the last uh last six months they they've got an absolutely amazing balance sheet they don't lose they don't move a lot but you might start looking at uh, luxottica as a as a potential opportunity if you are looking at um um CACA on strength if you're looking at the dax you know we, we don't have to go too far with the dax we might look at bmw or um or mercedes or, or something like that uh, something like that you know so you so you really can just by looking at the dollar start getting a basket of ideas um about what you might want to trade now, after you have that basket of ideas, you want to put all those things on a watch list and understand where they are in the supply chain. Now, what that means about the supply chain is that if we are saying that the dollar is the start of the supply chain, if you like, <clears throat> what gets affected if the dollar strengthens and if the euro weakens? If we want to see charts, if we're looking at charts, um, then uh, we, we need to make a decision. What do I like the best against the dollar? If I'm looking at dollar strength, what do I like the best? Personally, I like Bitcoin. 
I really like Bitcoin and I, and I really like Bitcoin for a short. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to go trade Bitcoin right now because obviously we haven't seen that turn around in the dollar. But if the dollar is to turn around and I see, um, oops, and I see an opportunity to trade Bitcoin as a short, then I'm taking it. I'm going to take this one on all day long. Now, we, we talked about some indicators um, last week. Um, Ash, why currency and stocks are? Oh, because, um, because if the euro, for example, weakens, so what right now I'm getting, um, where's my valuation of a euro? It's about one, 119, isn't it? 118. It's 118.70. So let's call it 119. If the euro is at 119, uh, so one euro gets me $119, and the euro starts to weaken, meaning that I get more, more, um, more, uh, sorry, uh, less dollars for my euro. So um, effectively, the dollar becomes more powerful. Now, this is history. Okay, this is what what's always happened in history. If the euro weakens, that means I get more bang for my buck now going this way rather than this way. So while the, um, while the dollar is, is um, sorry, while the euro is strong against the euro, people over here, the investors, like to take their money, take their euros, go over here, exchange it into dollars, and then buy stocks because they can get more now, more, more in their stocks um, for the price of the euro. Now, if the euro is all of a sudden to weaken, the same thing will happen this way around. So all of a sudden now, stocks in the, in the European space become, but be, become um, um, uh, by default, they become cheaper. So we're, if, we, if we're looking at a really nice company, let's say we really like Mercedes and we are, we are uh, in the US, we can buy shares in Mercedes. Um, but if, if Mercedes, um, if the balance sheet of Mercedes is, um, is, is affected, you know, sorry, if the balance sheet of Mercedes is starting to look positive, it would be better for me to get more bang for my buck while the dollar starts to strengthen. So I can now go and buy goods and services from another nation. And if I buy goods and services from the other nation, that means that the uh, the stocks, which are not finite, become um, uh, higher in value because the demand is higher for the likes of the European stocks when other nations are doing a lot better. Now, this is why the, we've had such a boom in Chinese equities is because the currency is um, is valuable enough to people to go and say, right, well, I can go and my, I can go and make these goods in China because it's much cheaper for me to go and do it in China because our currency is um, is, um, is 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 so better valued than uh, than it is um, if I were to, to to try and get the same goods produced over here in the U.S. So that's the correlation is um is is purely down to value you know it, 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 you, because yes you will have certain quality but as long as the quality is there if you've got two companies one living in uh, um in uh, the in the uk and one living in uh, in the us that make exactly the same goods and services i'm going to buy from these guys because they're cheaper we all we all want a bargain right so uh, if if a currency weakens then it, then uh, conversely that means that investors from overseas all of a sudden can get the same goods and services um, for the same quality for a lot cheaper and that pushes that stock price of that service up that, that's one of the reasons I mean there's, there's many other reasons but that's one of the reasons that that, uh, that particular thing happens um, and, uh, and and the other reason is that um, is that uh, if you've got um, a international if you've got another, if you've got an international company um, that, uh, you know, let's just say that, that there's Mercedes over here and they are selling into the US market. If they are getting um, now, if, they, if they've got their, their um, uh, they've got their plants over in America, when they bring their money back to the Eurozone where they pay tax, then they're actually getting more Euros as they sell over here, as the dollar is strengthened, they're getting more euros than they were before um, from uh, from this this same um, car sale. 
So that's that's another reason that it can help that particular stock start pushing to the upside. So that so they are they are um, you're you're absolutely right to spot that they are uh, inversely correlated, which is why when we're looking at um, no it it doesn't mean that every single time the dollar strengthens that. Um, that the, uh, the, the the stocks are weakened because it just doesn't happen like that. It just doesn't work like that. Um, but if you do see a um, a dollar weaken, then um, or a currency weaken, then it tends to buoy the stock market in that particular uh, country. And that is why when we get quantitative easing, it weakens the dollar because there's much more supply of dollars and it boosts the um, the stock market. So, um, so you, you know, you you always want to kind of look out for those correlations. Now, did you have a comment to make on that, mate? I, I can hear you in the background. Oh, microphone's open. Sorry, I didn't think. It was. <laughs> um, look, it's a phenomenon that I don't take any notice of. I've got to say, um, but. One well, thing that was a waste I would, of fifteen minutes. Not at all. I, I listened <laughs> to it intently, but. Yeah. It's something I had never thought of because I don't go outside of currencies, I suppose, yes. is, is yeah. the one reason. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I do tend to be selfish, I guess, in that regard. But that's because it's, it took me so long, I suppose, as a trader to understand what I was actually looking at on a chart. Yeah. And I didn't have the assistance you know, that, that is available to um, what the guys who are listening to this, number one. There was nobody nobody to help. It was a very, very lonely journey for me because I was sitting there, me, computer, that's it, nothing else. And I'd learned uh, a very, very skeletal, I think would be the best word to describe it, um, technical analysis course, and that was it. And there was really no strategy attached to that either. So, you know, my first foray into trading Forex was very much a, a leap of faith into something that, yeah, was very, very loosely based on something that would be that had been written in a book by somebody else. So, you know, I'm not going there. That was that was just my first introduction. But it, it served me well because it made me search further, and it made me understand that this was not a simple game that I was playing. And then, of course, uh, I went and and started searching outside of, of that narrow little band. But I, I still found that it took me a long, long time to understand what was moving the market, when it was moving the market, and why it was so easy to lose money. <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of my journey in, in a nutshell. But I, I've never gone outside of currencies because I yep. felt comfortable at that point. Yeah. And because I'm an old fart and do other things, uh, I think that was just the way I, the way I, it panned out for me. And, and yep. I'm not saying never, absolutely not. And that's why I, I think, you know, me being here listening to the likes of you, um, Julian and others who, who, you know, have got far more broad um, outlook on and experience in uh, in the different indices or or whatever is tradable, you know, whatever moves. You said there's how many four thousand a day or something. Yeah, I mean you got yeah you got you got uh, end, endless really in, in some respects an endless amount of products. When you think that there's there's a hundred stocks on the FTSE alone, and then you got the FTSE 350, um, you know the the, uh, the London Stock Exchange, and then you go to the US shares, which gives you another thousand odd. So um, you know there's there's a um, a big bulk of that just with two countries, you know, if that's forgetting uh, Germany and France and, and Asia, or in fact, let's, mm. let's call it Europe. Um, and that's forgetting also uh, cryptocurrencies and, and base metals and commodities. Um, and, um, um, and, 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 and of course, um, foreign exchange, you know, so that there are an endless amount in some respects, you know, obviously, it's not an endless amount. We can put a number on it, but thousands upon thousands of things that we can go and trade on a daily basis. And and just about everyone is related in some way or, or shape or form to the other. It, yeah, exactly. If, if only inversely. You know, exactly. Somewhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, just just thinking about the uh, 
the Chinese yuan, you know, this is pegged to the dollar. So, um, you know, and, and everything really comes back to it, it, we need to know what the reserve currency of the world is doing. And if we know uh, about the reserve currency of the world, it can help us make decisions right the way across the board. Uh, and as you say, even if you're trading euro versus the CAD, then uh, then understanding what's going on, the, on in the dollar to a lesser degree, but still to a degree is going to mm. aid the um, is going to aid the decision. Um, now, the, it does mean that, you know, because because I'm looking for what I'm looking for with the dollar, I'm looking for reversal with the dollar. It does mean that I'm looking for just a little bit of upside in some of these. So I want I want some upside with Bitcoin. I want some potential holding with um, um, with the, with the euro as well. But I want Bitcoin somewhere around about that level. Um, but even better around there, you know, where it where it actually broke out of the uh, the head and shoulders, which you can see here. There's the head and shoulders pattern there. Left shoulder, head. Sorry, left shoulder, head, right shoulder going on. There's the right shoulder here. So, um, it, you know, it's, it's broken through. We have another retest. Now, on that retest is when I'd really like to go short. It may not get there. It's got two, three days to get up there because, in my opinion, we're going to we're going to see some price action that might well turn this around um, after the Fed. Uh, yeah, uh, Crystal, um, the one is pegged to the dollar. Yeah. Um, do they manipulate? Well, <laughs> ask Donald Trump. <laughs> I, I mean, they do. I mean, it's you know. Of course, they manipulate. There's, there's, um, there's. They're not meant to manipulate. Um, it's, it's, it's completely illegal. But, uh, but they, uh, but they do yeah, it. They, they do it they, on purpose. It's just, just a, a happy coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it's just a happy coincidence. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, there's, um, there's no doubt that the, uh, the, the. You see, the way that the, it's the way the Chinese get away with it is that they are pegged to a basket of currencies. It's not just the dollar. They peg it to a basket of currencies. And depending on the weight of, and they do it on a daily basis, depending on the weight of which currencies they, they decide to have at the top of their list, if you like, from one, from one to another. I mean, it's more heavily weighted towards the dollar. But if you, if you include some other currencies, um, then they manage to keep their currency at a very competitive rate. Um, but nobody knows what the weighting is. You see, that's the that's the clever thing that uh, that the Chinese one manages to kind of get around. Uh, some currencies are directly linked to the dollar, and that's that. You know, you, you know, you know where you are with it. But uh, but the Chinese are a little bit more. Um, uh, they're a bit they're a bit cleverer than that. They're a bit cuter than that. So they uh, they they know just how to peg it in the right areas to kind of keep it competitive. And why not? You know, it's it is, uh, it's what what they're doing probably isn't illegal because they've managed to find the loophole. So uh, you know, that's that's just something that um, some intelligent U.S. president is going to have to work out, and uh, he's probably not in office right now. So uh, and probably not going to come in office next time either. So the Chinese. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been it has been a, a while. Yeah, it absolutely has. So I'm looking for some upside in the euro, upside in gold, upside or, or or at least some flat price action in the euro, flat price action in gold, flat price action in um, the um, uh, uh, what do I want to say uh, euro uh, euro euro um, and gold. Some maybe some positive price action here and some positive price action potentially in the indices as well. But I am not getting drawn into longs in any of these because I don't believe the move to the upside is a reversal. I think this is a retracement and I'm going to trade it as, and I'm going to treat it like a retracement, which means I'm waiting in the, uh, in the, in the long grass, ready to pounce on this in the opposite direction. And if I bring in the Euro, the pounds are completely different uh, beast right now. And, and I personally wouldn't touch it. Um, if I were you, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very, very dangerous, but, uh, but we might be able to consider the FTSE instead. The NASDAQ, um, uh, I wonder, I'm still of the opinion that there might be one more push into this area and possibly higher, possibly to the, uh, the weekly or monthly pivot. <clears throat> but again, I don't care. I don't care if it's up here. I don't care if it's down here because I am short on the NASDAQ as well. You know, that's my opinion. We, we go short the NASDAQ. But my trigger is going to come, come all the way from looking for a, uh, a price action buy on the US dollar. As soon as I see a price action buy on the US dollar, I'm going to go through that throughout the whole basket and go, right, how is, I forget the Aussie actually, but how is the, uh, the dollar CAD looking? 
pretty good. Look at that dollar CAD. And now all I all I really need right now for to give me some confidence that the dollar CAD is now going up. Look at that inverted head and shoulders. Maybe maybe it needs to just have a few more days before this um this is genuinely going to go up one one or two days, and then we might see some uh, some dollar strength against the CAD. If oil goes down, this will happen. Um, and and if and if the dollar goes up, that that is likely I should say to happen. So dollar CAD would would certainly be something that I'd be interested. In. So I'm just waiting for that um that 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 dollar to turn around, the dollar index to turn around, and I can go long dollar CAD. And, and this is the thing, you know, I I think we could argue the point right now that the dollar CAD already looks like an attractive long, right on top of the monthly pivot. Take it here, no problem. But if I get the dollar index, which means that the basket of currencies are weakened against the dollar, this is going to look a lot more attractive. And, and, you know, we may end up missing this one because it might start to strengthen before the others. But no big deal. We can start to we can switch to the euro. Euro is caught in this range up here. Now, I am aware that we are probably at the end of our half hour. <clears throat> that's caught in the range up there so I'll, I'll look for the euro as well um so we are at the the end of the half hour sorry guys so we, we're gonna have to switch uh, switch away from this um before and, you do uh, uh, yeah. i don't think it matters that much to be honest if we go over a couple of minutes because okay. as long as we don't <laughs> reveal anything too much um s p 500 how we yep. chart i've never S &P traded 500. in my life okay but it looks to me like a very juicy false break of a trend line. You like it to the downside. Yeah. You see, I've got a bit of a problem until the dollar strengthens about. I don't like it trade. because the weekly pivot's right dead ahead, but. Yeah. Uh, mm. I mean, the, 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 uh, the markets are weak. There's, there's, uh, the, there's no question the markets are weak. Is the timing right? I don't know if it is, mate. I mean, you know, I know, I know. There's sort of there's a few people in the organisation that are already short on these stocks, but I think there's every chance it still comes up here, floats about. Yep. Every chance we see the monthly pivot and floats about. I, I just, I just personally, I don't want to get drawn into any trades um, well, until. Well, I hasten to add, I'm not trading it, but it looks interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, maybe somebody I might have a different opinion about that. Um, we are going to hear from Shukri about uh, Larry Williams during the show. So, uh, Shukri's hopefully... changing my life. And my life will never be the same. I find yeah. you, you can teach an old dog his new tricks, you reckon, Shukri? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. All right, well, we, we, we better push off. I've got the, uh, I've got the, the, the track ready, ready and lined up. Um, let's just quickly get to some of the questions in the room. We've done the, the why, why currencies and stocks are inversely correlated. Do you trade the pound and the, and the pound, uh, sorry, the pound and dollar accounts, depending on the value at that time? I don't, Crystal, and I think that would be a headache. Um, you know, you, you like adding that into the, um, into the equation, I think would be a headache. And it, and it is kind of unnecessary. Because if um, if the value of one currency is 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 dropping, then we can just look for trades that actually relate to that rather than um, um, trade. You know, switching accounts. I don't think, I don't think that would be uh, too too necessary. Um, hi guys, first time attending your double shift. Are you still doing the afternoon session? Yes, Sai. We are about to start the uh, the second session in a few moments time. And we've answered the peg and we've said um, thanks. So we will, we'll, 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 we'll bid you guys adieu. But thanks so much for popping in. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure. And so if you meant the, um, the UK session, the answer to the, the question is the same. Yes, still doing that. So I'm not sure which session you meant. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's morning for me in the, in the uh, UK. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is my afternoon. So if the, uh, if the afternoon session is... Um, is for you the U, the uk session then yes we are we'll be back tomorrow same uh, same trade time at same trade channel at five to eight that's a date don't be late <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well we'll see you in a bit anyway we'll see you tomorrow um at uh, that time tomorrow but for the rest of you we'll see you in the room and uh we are going to start and